What's going on guys? We're back in Bash and today I wanted to show you guys how functions work. Now if you've done any type of programming before then you've already heard of functions but I'm sure that there's some people that don't do much programming or just getting into it that might watch this. So basically what a function allows you to do is to create a block of code typically one that you'll end up using again and again. And because that block of code is wrapped inside of a function, it allows you to call on it very easily. So I have this function, hello, that I've created here. And as you can see, there are multiple echo commands inside of this function, five to be exact. Now, let's say that we were making a script where for whatever reason, we need to echo these same exact strings or strings similar to it multiple times. How exactly would we go about implementing that? Well, what someone who doesn't really know how to program would probably do is just highlight all of those echo commands and paste them again and again. But that's not a very good way of doing it because see if we had to paste it say five times you see that this starts to get very very verbose it makes our file size much larger which can actually be a bit of an issue on some systems that don't have a lot of storage you don't want to have obnoxiously large file sizes well because i wrapped it inside of this function hello then all I have to do to print out all of those echo statements is to just call on the function down here. So let me go ahead and comment this stuff out because I'm going to show you guys this later. And let's demonstrate this. So we'll call functions.sh and you see all of these individual lines of text printed. And if I wanted to repeat this five times, all I have to do is instead copy the function call. So we have five calls to our hello function here. And then we can go ahead and run it. And you see it prints out five times. And we were able to do it in a way that's much, much neater than just copying and pasting. And obviously our file size is significantly smaller because we don't have anywhere near as much text inside of it. Now, speaking of things looking nice, there's more than one way to define a function in Bash. So this is one way that you could do it by having this word function in front of the actual function name. So the function name is of course, hello, and down here is where we called it, but we don't need to have this string that says function here. That's just to kind of help us identify it as a function. What you could also do, after I comment this out, is you could just do it like this, where you just create the name of the function and then you have your double brackets here, which helps Bash acknowledge that it is indeed a function. And then we have the curly braces where we're going to place all of the code inside of it. So I'll go ahead and run this for you just to show you that it does indeed work. No tricks here. These are both exactly the same thing. Now, it's unlikely that you're going to have a script where you actually need to echo out all these different strings and you're going to need to do it so many times that you'll end up creating a function for it. So down below, I've gone ahead and created a function that's a little bit more of a real world example for something that you might use. So down here, I've got this function network test, and I'm just gonna walk you through it real quick so that you know what it ends up doing. So we have this if statement here where it's going to try to ping gnu.org. And we have this one code here, which basically represents that it is successful. And if it is not successful, it's going to output something other than one, which is when the else down there would trigger. 
Now, if it is successfully able to ping GNU.org, we're going to echo that our network seems to be up. But if we fail to ping GNU.org, then we're going to echo the network seems to be down. And we've also got this nested if statement that I decided to create just for the hell of it to show the importance of functions because obviously you really wouldn't want to recreate nested if statements over and over again. It just is gonna make the script very verbose. So this second if statement tries to ping 8.8.8.8, Google's DNS server. And the reason for that is it is possible sometimes to not be able to ping a website like GNU.org, but you're able to ping 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. Basically, that just means that you're having a failure with your DNS server. Your DNS server, for whatever reason, isn't able to translate names into IP addresses. And so I've gone ahead and, oh, before I get into that, so if that fails as well, it's going to run an if config and output it to nwinterface.txt. And it's also going to create that file because I don't, think I had that file already created where you know our network administrator or whoever can then go and take a look at that nwinterface.txt to see the status of your network interface and figure out why the hell your computer isn't able to go onto the internet. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate this function for you guys because of course I called on the function down here. So it tells me that my network seems to be up, of course, because I'm connected via ethernet. No real reason for my network to be down, but what I could do is, actually, I don't know my interface by heart. ENP, okay. So what I could do is take down my network interface. So I'll do a sudo ifconfig enp0s25 down. So what that did is it just disconnected my internet connection. And if I go ahead and run this uh, function script again, you'll see that the network seems to be down and the ping to 8.8.8.8 .8 also failed. The network has an issue. Well, what is our network issue? Let's vim into this network interface.txt. And oh, look at that. We don't actually have a network interface up. The only thing that's working is our loopback address. So this is a function that you might actually end up using in a script. Maybe you want to create a script to switch VPNs or switch proxies, and maybe you'd want to call this function right after you change to a particular VPN or proxy to actually test if that VPN or proxy is working. And every time you do that, you can just define this function once in the script, and then you can just call this network test, and you don't have to go ahead and type out these, I don't know, this looks like 10 or 15 lines of code every single time you want to check on your network. So this has been how to use functions in Bash. I may make a follow-up video or two to this because there's a few more other things that we can do with functions that I just don't want to cover in this video because I don't want it to be too long. But if you found this video useful, be sure to leave a like on it, share it with someone else who you think would find it useful. Peace out, guys.